Hello everyone and welcome to the iSpring Solutions webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today as it's our sixth lesson of our webinar series and we will be talking about creating interactive and immersive content. My name is Paulina, I am a community manager and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. And as a speaker, we have one and only Michael Shiashi. Hi Michael, how are you doing? <laughs> Hi Paulina, good to see you, thanks. So uh, Michael is a technologist at Alternative Media and he will be discovering this topic today for you guys. And I wanted to um, announce for those who don't know that we have prepared a special bonus for you guys and this is an online face-to-face -face consultation with Michael. So we have three options, it's 60, 45 and 30 minutes of this online session. And in order to receive it, you just simply need to follow these rules. You need to answer this question. What did you learn at this webinar series? And post it under the main blog post for our webinars. And I will be sharing the link in our chat box in a moment. And basically get your friends, family and colleagues to vote for your choice. And at the end of the webinar series, we will see the top three answers. And this will be our three three winners and we will let you guys know how you can receive your session we will schedule a, a time and I will be more specific regarding the dates closer to the end of our series and also I have invited to this session my colleague Alex Dim he is a technical support engineer and he will be taking care of your questions in chat and during the Q&A session the ones that are necessarily related to iSpring so he will be helping out Michael and yes as always uh, at the end of this webinar we're going to have a Q&A session so if you guys have any questions comments or concerns please send them in the sec uh, I'm sorry question box which you may find on the right side of your go to webinar panel somewhere at the very bottom okay so I think guys we're ready to begin right now so Michael let me please pass the mic over to you fantastic all right, so I passed the presenter rules, rights, I'm sorry, to you. Mm -hmm. And okay. I'm now sharing my title screen, you should see it. Yes, I, I can see your title screen. Great, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Paulina, I appreciate that, and thanks for the wonderful world, uh, words, and I appreciate it, and um, thank you to iSpring for hosting this. And welcome, everyone, to Attention, Please, Creating Interactive and Immersive Content. Um, I appreciate everyone, appreciate everyone coming, and um, uh, thank you for your continued attendance, or if you're new, thank you for coming in today. So, uh, as Polina mentioned, I'm a technologist at A&M, alternativemedia.com. Uh, I have a background in film and Native American studies. I'm a member of the Caddo Nation of Oklahoma. I have a background uh, MFA in 3D modeling from the Academy of Art University, and I've been doing e-learning and IT for 20 years now. Uh, so, I, I thank you very much for joining this journey with me today. and. I wanted to add on to what Polina said. So in addition to asking questions and continuing this discussion, uh, the style of my presentation, as always, will be very laid back and casual and conversational. Uh, so I encourage each and every one of you to get into the chat, talk with each other, ask direct questions to the technical expert on the iSpring side, ask me questions, uh, but make sure that we have a group discussion going on. And if you want to tweet, you can do it at, at, at MassEDev or at iSpring Pro. Uh, so let's take a quick look back. There's a lot of information I want to share today, but looking back at last week's, we talked about the three-stage three, three stage model, how your brain works, and how assessments affect those, and why and when we test. Uh, there's a great article included last week from Art Khan about how the uh, brain works, about short-term memory, long-term memory, and whether uh, testing early or later helps that. Uh, there's some information from Patty Shank on some mistakes when creating assessments and quizzes, uh, how to avoid them, and, and what's some ways to make some great um, quizzes and stuff. And so, and also uh, pro tips from Sam Rogers and other articles uh, on how to create multiple choice questions. We also looked at uh, the quiz demo and how to create quizzes inside iSpring. We looked at multiple choice, true, false, open-ended, fill in the blank, matching, definition. We even in, uh, looked at ways to enhance your quizzes. Uh, including audio and video, some branching, uh, making sure you customize it in the slide view 
than others. So we looked at the slide view. Uh, we looked at ways to make sure that you have the best content presentation, uh, making sure that you can also uh, adjust the theme and layout, a uh, very powerful tool. And we also demonstrated a way to import and export questions um, as a question pool, sharing it with perhaps other uh, quiz writers or people to help you uh, in order to collaborate on that. So as you see, we're just past the midway point. Uh, and so with that, you know, we've gone through weeks one through five. We've done, we've covered a lot of ground. We're gaining momentum as we go along. This week we'll be talking about creating immersive and interactive content. Uh, next week we're looking at you know, user interface and user, user experience best practice. The following week we'll make sure we look at ways to polish up your content. Uh, and then we'll look at ways to publish and share your content. And finally we'll have the sort of best in show demonstration. Uh, as we hit the midway mark, I want to show everyone uh, the website, alternativemedia.com. Um, the link is included, uh, but I created a blog post celebrating the halfway point and what lessons learned and celebrating um, some really uh, great things about the webinar and, more importantly, your, particip your participation in it. So thank you all. So let's take a look at what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to cover some theoreticals. Um, looking at what makes something interactive and why and why it's important. Um, I'll focus on branching within iSpring and within our content. Uh, and then we'll look at some real world uh, ex uh, examples of how to do things in TalkMaster and then customizing it well. As always, don't save your questions for the end. Make sure that you insert them uh, as they come. So uh, diving right into it, let's take a look. So uh, talking about interact uh, interactivity, and e-learning and our learners, uh, there's a really great article from Mark Rosenberg um, that talks about the difference between interactivity and engagement. Uh, and I'll pull up the website so you can see it. Um, but basically, it, it suggests that everyone is different. Pulling it up now. Here it is. It's on the Learning Solutions magazine that everyone's different. And more importantly, uh, there needs to be the, the notion of the difference between interactivity and engagement. Now, we sometimes uh, talk about these synonymously. We, we think that they are the same thing, and they can be. But remember, interactivity is inter, you're interacting with uh, the content of the environment, or your learner is, or you hope they are. They're doing something. They're clicking on something. They're revealing something. Uh, they're watching a video. But the, the engagement is more about the intrinsic value. Uh, what does all of the content, or what does all of that, of that interactivity do? is there some interest from the learner at that level uh, intrinsically within them? So we want to ensure as we talk about these ideas that our overarching goal is to create both, both interactive content, but more importantly, interactive content that engages our learner uh, and helps make stick the, the content and comments and, and uh, communication we're getting across. Another great article I like to bring up uh, is the six tips for learning engagement. Uh, one of which talks about something near and dear to my heart, which is uh, talking about the choose your own adventure. Uh, making sure that the learner uh, is allowed to branch off and, and use their own uh, you know, methodology and, and find ways through the content that has some intrinsic value for them. So real quickly, let's talk about a poll question here. So. What success stories do you have? And, and pull in a, if you could open it up uh, or you know put it in the poll section, that's fine. Uh, and so I'll just read it on screen while you do that. So what success stories do you all have and where have you actively engaged your learners or increased your interactivity? Now remember, I just said they're different. However, the goal is to keep them uh, that, that we do both. So how did you do it? And, and please share your um, thoughts and, and success stories inside the chat. Okay, and Paulina, make sure you alert me when some stuff comes in. I'm going, going to sure. go ahead and move on. Yep. So as we talk about interactivity and engagement, the idea of games or gamification keeps coming up. Um, there's a fantastic article that I'll bring up for you here. I have some visuals here, but let's take a quick look uh, on the website. Uh, you can find this really great article and video below uh, from Andrew Hughes of Desi Designing Digitally, one of the leaders uh, of creating gamification and games and serious games. Uh, there's a lot of great information here. Can I, uh, course, can I say something mm -hmm. here really quickly? Please. We had a webinar on this exact topic with Andrew 
on our spring platform so i will be sharing the link to if you guys want to watch this webinar in the chat section as well yes that's great so and here's the video at the bottom as well so uh and in this and so thank you for sharing that by the way Polina. and so uh in this i'll just kind of overlay it here but basically there's a lot of great information where specific game examples are given uh as well as a um a, a infographic that shows you the difference between gamification, serious games, gameful design, and just real games, and, and how the their purpose or fun level uh, is marked, as well as measuring the gameplay and or no gameplay. So if there's no gameplay, but it's visually fun, um, say like the Domino's Pizza Tracker, it's a gameful design. It's, it's simply gamifying the design. But if something has purpose, but very little gameplay, it's gamification. And in the article, you can see the um, person, Andrew, talks about uh, making a game for his children out of raking leaves. So it's making something that's tedious fun. Um, but if it has purpose and gameplay, it's serious game. Uh, and the, the example given is a game they created for air marshals, uh, wherein they had a specific task. It had real uh, training involved with their roles, uh, and it was, it was maybe fun. So. If it's just fun and, and has gameplay, then we usually talk about them as games, like the popular Assassin's Creed uh, or Assassin's Creed game. So, this is just an idea to how to talk about the same language when we gamify things. Again, while this is interesting, I want to point out that today we're not going to focus on gamification, but I do want you to understand it. One reason is, of course, it's beyond the scope of what we can talk about today. But you can take some of those concepts, uh, concepts, and make uh, your your e-learning content more robust more interactive, literally interacting with it, and of course more engaging. Uh, some of the reason we won't get into it, it requires significant development time and develop design time uh, up front. So we would need to do everything we've done within our pipeline of process with this gamification just on its own as an encapsulated learning content piece. So as you do these, be sure to experiment and, and keep engagement and the advocation for learner in mind. And of course, today we're going to focus on branching. Um, and so why branching? Well, again, I kind of alluded to it earlier. One of my favorite things from childhood are the books, Choose Your Own Adventure. And you may remember um, early on, the, the very first and second uh, webinars, we talked about level one, level two, e-learning. Level one would be what we jokingly call page turners, wherein the information is just text, page after page or slide after slide. Um, and so we want to make sure that we create uh, choose your own adventure branching or something that's engaging and fun uh, for our learners uh, rather than just a specific page turner where it's linear, there's no control, uh, there's no intrinsic value. So remember that as learning advocates for, you know, we want to make sure that learner experience is the utmost goal. So let's have another quick question. And before we do, uh, were there any results from the previous poll question, Paulina? I'm sorry? Were there any um, previous poll question shares that, that we want to discuss or just move on to question um, two? Yeah, there were a couple, like uh, simply adding presenter video to your presentation kept folks engaged and paying attention. And there is also one comment from Bud. I've I've had groups of students read sections in a book, then teach their section to the rest of the class using various props, acting, singing, or whatever. They are very involved in this way and gain ownership as to how the topics are taught in class, which I think is amazing. Very cool. And, and on that same note, I, I think we'll find a lot of our industries are the same. I I used to work for the College of Nursing in Oklahoma, and so as we taught nurse practitioners, we would say, learn one, do one, teach one, uh, to uh, have that core uh, teaching mentality go. And so that same thing is, is being there represented by Bud, so that's a great comment, so thank you. Any others? Uh, I think we can move on at this point. Okay, so poll question number two. So besides the choose your own adventure that I mentioned, um, bring to the table what other examples of branching you can think of or you've used. Now, some of you have kind of already touched on this, but specific, specific examples of uh, maybe some branching that was favorite to you. And again, I've used the Choose Your Own Adventure. So um, use the chat area uh, and share your uh, personal favorites for some branching. They can be anything. It's an interactive uh, CD-ROM, 
uh, it's a Blu-ray disc, anything that you kind of think of as, as examples of branching. So really I want to get some discussion and some brainstorming going. So Polina, be sure to jump in with any um, really nice insights. For now, let's talk about the branching and, and how we want to focus on our learners. So remember that the focus as learning advocates is to get that intrinsic value or interest. Uh, we want to make sure that when we create branching, it allows our, our learners a sense of control. Can they skip? Can they restart? Um, and we want to make sure that we provide several outcomes in order to make each and every experience uh, fresh uh, and feel like it's unique for our users and learners. So again, the whole idea is to make the experience very robust. And again, all of this from our perspective of being an advocate and a champion for the learner as we continue on and create. A um, real quick example I'll show you available on the iSpring website, so by Guido Horning, uh, Hornick, and so um, I'll share this with you. So this is a sort of uh, quick example of uh, branching. Let's see if I can get to it here. And again, you can read all about it. The link will be provided here. Uh, and so here is the branching. It may not be very huge on your screen. It'll pop up here. There's a little bit of audio. And so so we have the introduction about what we're doing, the instructions. Uh, we have some interactivity here. But within each of these, the person can go to a different area, and we're branching off in, in various ways. So this is a very interesting visually example uh, with some really nice tricks that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but in each of these, there is a specific pathway that has gone to um, in order. And again, I just wanted to have everyone to have that example available. So um, we'll also talk about making this specific uh, branching in iSpring Talkmaster, but really what I want to get to is, as I mentioned previous, the idea between page turner uh, and the interactivity. It takes a little more work on the front end, obviously. There has to be a shift, again, from that page one, page two, slide one, slide two, to a starting point uh, and branching out into wherever that leads and wherever that might lead. Now, again, the paths can cross and come back and circumvent, but it's more important that as you create these items, think, th think of each uh, encapsulated experience, uh, again, as something that may not be uh, arrived at linearly, but something that can be arrived to is self-contained. And we'll get to some more of that a little bit later, but again, I wanted to point out that's a little bit of a mind shift. As suggested earlier, you can do a lot of the branching in the Presentation Explorer in iSpring. Uh, there's some visual examples on screen here where, uh, depending on what you would want to do, you, you could go to a different slide, you could go to a different quiz. Uh, remember that with the quizzes on pass-fail, you can go to a whole new section if the learner needs to review more information. So many of these tools are already available to you, suggesting perhaps if you have something that's already linear, play it around with it. Use the Presentation Explorer to see how maybe you can make it more branching. Uh, and a throwback to last week's quiz um, demo, we talked about ways to branch with inside each question as well, uh, going uh, pass-fail for each question or correct or incorrect, uh, question by question. These all can be done within uh, the iSpring quiz demo. Um, but today, what I wanted to take a look at is, is looking at TalkMaster demo. So before I do so, Polina, from our other poll question, anything interesting coming up? Um, sure, we have several responses regarding that branching that people use in their education or training. So we have such answers like use scenario to introduce topic and um, answer a correctly and branch to an optional challenge or if incorrect branch to a refresher. Then uh, we did branching on department roles. If you are a manager, go here. If you are a non-manager, go here. Quizzes in iSpring when they get answers right or wrong. Uh, then somebody uses Talk Master, or for those who need further definitions of techno speak terms, we've branched off to give definitions to terms that some newer learners might not know. And a simple example from Karina is having a table of contents. Click on the chapter or topic to go right to that area, often used in a big PDF documents. That's all really great information, and a lot of what came to mind is as we talk about branching, remember early on in the weeks we talked about using iSpring to create these uh, more interactive uh, uh, vignettes, and some of those include terminology, as was brought up, or a list of terms, or uh, FAQs. 
Uh, so remember, you can create branching that that is the end point or is that is one of the branches itself where if a a person needs to dig down or dr drill down for information, they can get it, they can get more robust information. Uh, thinking back to our um, uh, video of would you like to know more um, from the uh, sci-fi movie we showed earlier on. So that's great information. So um, as we look at TalkMaster, uh, and again, feel free to continue to discuss. So some things I wanna show is how easy it is to branch, uh, how you can use the assets within each to really support your information and learning. Uh, and as you publish, it's very responsive. Um, it looks great on all the devices I've tested with. Uh, you can make it ready for your LMS or LRS and, and posting scores to that. Uh, but basically wanna make sure that we, uh, as we continue to look at these, we think of ways we can enhance these, whether it's audio or video or our own images. Um, but as we do that, uh, let's take a quick idea here. So as I demo, remember what we're doing is we're creating our own e adventure And you know, I've kind of, uh, jokingly made that my own phrase, choose your own adventure, but an e-venture. So um, as we do this, use the content library, which I'll show you, uh, and consider using the emotional feedback with some of those library content pieces. Uh, and think about what happens if a learner answers wrong or incorrectly or branches down, can they start over? Uh, or do they need more information at that point and can you provide it on screen? So. Uh, as I demo, you'll see me just kind of doing uh, the power of three, and I've kind of demonstrated that here in the graphics. So I'll have a starting place, I'll have one or two answers. In each answer, I'll try to provide a, a yes, no, or maybe. Uh, and so that'll kind of give you a very simple idea of branching. Now, we won't focus on my textual content. It'll just be, um, you know, phrases and answer one, answer two, but I want you to see how easy it is to create uh, content. So let's minimize this screen, and I will open up a new PowerPoint. Uh, so that we have a fresh area and make it blank. Okay, and I'll go ahead and, and save this uh, just so that it, we won't have to save it here in a moment. And that's fine, we'll just leave it presentation one. You can name it whatever you need as long as you know where it is. And so we will go to iSpring and create the the talk simulation here, okay? So I wanna make sure that this is full screen when it opens up. And again, we're just going to go through the um, ways of creating it. So this is a very familiar layout for most of you. Um, if we have one that we've created or need to work on or have one that we've imported from the iSpring website, we can start from there. Uh, we'll look at those in just a minute, but for now, we'll just create a, a new one. Uh, and so you have a blank canvas and obviously we need something to start with, so we'll start with a new scene. Each of these scenes will be seen as little visual representations here. Um, so before we do anything, let's, let's go in and, and choose some uh, ideas here. So let's, let's choose a character, and notice right off the bat you have a lot to choose from. Uh, we're going to, uh, and these with the uh, happy face emoticons are ones that you can adjust emotions with. You can add happy, sad, so let's just choose one at random. We'll leave this character at normal, but notice you could set up different emotions right off the bat. Um, we will also, uh, we could import from content library, we could add our own, uh, which I'll show you in a moment. Clicking up here in the background, we could choose any of these ready-made backgrounds, uh, a lot of which suggest a professional environment uh, or some such. So let's just choose those and say close. Uh, and now we have our image of our person. We can then begin uh, entering information as this character would be speaking. So, hi, I have a question uh, about my account. Again, uh, it could be anything uh, or it could be, you know, any sort of greeting, but what we want to do uh, is add replies. And again, this is the power of three I mentioned. So we'll, we'll click here uh, and we will say answer one. Again, this might be something you would put here or a reply or a negative or positive um, in order to facilitate the emotion. We'll add another one, answer two. The idea is not necessarily for us to create one here that would be robust, but in order for you to see uh, how easy it is to create the branching using this. So now that I have my question and possible answers, uh, I will link this to a uh, response, and again, we're going to the power of three. So answer one uh, would have another possible venue, and we would say that my answer one was good and that, that made the character happy, uh, or yeah, that's fine. We will say happy at this point. So 
Uh, and, and then here's another question that the um, character has or a response to my answer one. Uh, we'll add a reply, and again, this is the power of three. Remember, this is where I said yes, no, and maybe. And again, this could be anything. This could be yes, no, almost, uh, whatever it is. So uh, really, I'm just showing you how to do this. So uh, we've established this, and we will give one more for each of these, and, and then repeat the same. So as I have the yes answer, the yes has continued to make the character happy. And this person character says yay. And we have a message that says, thanks for answering, choosing, whatever it is. Thanks for the correct answer. OK, we'll go back into our previous one. We'll create one for no. And again, I'm just dragging these out. And notice each time that I drag one out, it makes a place for me to adjust this. So on our no, we will make the person unhappy but not mad uh, because we've already answered them. Again, we can change each of these. And I'll preview these just in a moment. So, um, so then we have a message. And again, you could add even more branching and more replies here. In this area, notice you could add images or links. Um, uh, we could add quite a bit of stuff, so too bad. And then again, for our maybe answer, we'll close this. Uh, and again, this is maybe. We can we don't have to open this up. We can just drag the link here. We have a new scene. Um, what does that mean? And we'll add a message. And again, we'll create a neutral here or the puzzled look. And we'll say not quite okay now these are very rudimentary and simple examples um, and we would do that for each of these for each answers two and three uh, but let's take a quick let's save before we get any further here at the icon uh, let's take a quick look at the preview so that we kind of see where we've gone and again i've only added a branching for answer one but notice how much information we've added how many branchings we've added so within the span of five or so minutes and again most of this would have to be written as a little bit better. Um, but very quickly, we have the structure that we can see. Uh, notice here we have the background we've chosen. We have the character we've chosen from the content library. We have uh, an indicator here of the uh, emotional state of the character. We have our potential answers. Remember, you could also start this with the information slide or such. So uh, we will say answer one because, again, we don't have answers for two and three yet or branching. We'll click on one. Um, we will. This is where I specify that they had a clarifying question or, or another question to which we could say yes, no, or maybe. We can choose any of these. Uh, I will say no so that we can see the change in the emotion as well. And so we have the finalized statement. We can either restart or refinish, which can also be edited within the player itself. Uh, so let's let me add just a couple of quick ones for the answer two. And again, this will be similar to our answer for one. Um, in this case, we will say, um, you know, let's say that it was a, a neutral statement. Actually, let's say it was a negative statement, in which case our normal has gone to sort of a puzzled. Okay. Um, this person says, I don't understand, based on response answer two. Uh, we will then add replies. Again, we're sticking with our yes, no, and maybe. And these are simple uh, responses. You could put anything in here as much uh, as you'd like within the constraints of the text field. But in each of these, remember, it's just easy to add the new scene. We click and drag. Uh, in this case, we say yes. And the person has gone from the puzzled normal to slightly happy, but not overly happy. Uh, and we say the character says OK, or something to that res respect. Let me close this and do message, which will be our final message. Um, that is correct. Or any other message to specify, we said OK or yes. Same thing with no. We'll go back in. We'll branch it. Uh, we will have a little bit of unhappy, but not completely mad. Actually, let's just make it completely angry. Uh, and so I don't like that. And that's for our no answer. And here we will have the area for response or end message. 
to a no answer. Finally, we'll have a maybe. I'll just drag it over here. We can adjust these wherever we need to. Again, notice we have a connector node or a little blue line that shows us exactly where we're going. Uh, this is the maybe, and we will leave the puzzled look here. Uh, and this would be uh, the answer to maybe, and there would be a response to the maybe section. And a final end message. So try again or something similar, which they could do. So again, going to the preview, uh, let me before we do that, let's save. Okay, and we'll preview the simulation. Uh, I have a question about my account. We already went through answer one. This time we'll go through answer two. We still have the indicator of the emotions changing. I don't understand based on answer two. Um, let's see no, so we can see the change in the MAD. And so here's the end, mess uh, end message. So that's a little bit of the preview. Obviously within the same constraint and same window, uh, you can adjust the properties, uh, you can rename it, uh, you can send it by email, you can send it to server, um, you can adjust how the player looks uh, and if the title shows up on the screen, uh, colors to match your overall layout. Uh, instead of uh, finish or restart, you could adjust the text label. So all this is adjustable here in the Talk Master setting. Uh, all right, so let's go back. And again, remember that I, I use the power of three in this one, answer one, two, and three, and along with a response to each of these. So that's a lot of information, but I wanted you to see an overview of, of how to create things in TalkMaster. And with that, let's take a quick look at some really nice um, demos that are available. So I'll click on this, and they should go full screen. These are all available from the iSpring website, and I've included links, so you'll have those as well. Uh, let me see if I can pull this up. So thinking about what we just did and how easy it was to create branching, you notice that this has a centralized character. It has a uh, emotion scale here. You have a start message that the person can read maybe with instructions. Uh, and so as we go into it, we have, again, these similar choices. Notice I didn't have to adjust any of this when I, I created it. This is uh, available here uh, and it can be gone through and it's already formatted for you. So um, let's just say, so this third one, do nothing and wait for the client to contact you. What happens? Uh, we have an emotional change and a message that, by the way, um, most people don't appreciate that. So let's continue. We have a different branching. That wasn't the way we needed to go it, so we need to restart. Uh, here's the start message. We go in, choose a different one. Very smart of you. Okay. And we continue on with the conversation. Again, this is specifically for sales. Okay. And this has audio, okay, so you can add audio as well. So that's one example. Uh, let's take another quick look. And again, that would be more for uh, sales, uh, for car sales in this specific. Remember, this could be anything. This could be for customer service. In this particular example that I'll show, uh, it's an example of how, uh, you know, to do maybe customer service on the phone or in person uh, about someone's account. So let's take a look here as I open it up. Okay. Okay, so the introductory text is accompanied with audio. Again, like I showed you before, we start the scene out. We have a background image with a, uh, a character person from the content library, and that has a, an emotional uh, response to each one. We start. Yep, yeah, and there is information and one choice this time. There's audio with each. Okay, and so we also have the branching example here. And again, I'm just stopping the audio so we can continue. Um, let's choose the middle one. Okay, so, okay, so all these are available. Notice that each one, each choice branches to a different place. Okay, and in this case, we're starting over. And again, that's very easy to do. So, uh, and again, you don't have to do just talk simulations. As I've shown before, uh, in this particular example for a demo, I created um, a really interactive FAQ or frequently asked questions uh, that built on the theme of um, Ash versus Evil Dead of Army of Darkness. And this was called Necronomicon. Um, 
as we get into it, everything was created with iSpring, and you may have heard the audio just say groovy. Uh, so about this demo brings up the FAQ I mentioned. This one does not have audio, but this is a way to think about rather than a dialogue simulation where you're practicing sales or practicing taking care of clients or customers, it's simply a FAQ interaction between the centralized character scene here uh, that I was able to import in the uh, talk method simulation uh, and then a lot of choices that you could branch off and answer your own uh, this is just one way to think of how to do the um, FAQ or any information you want to provide again this is tongue-in-cheek sort of joking uh, we have sort of the attitude of this character answering each time um, and so a lot of these are sort of joking so again you, this is a, a lot of different ways to view it uh, to branch and to add interactivity and intrinsic value, in this case humor, um, to the learner. So let's do a quick poll question. Um, again, this is number three, and Paulina, if we could put that uh, in, sure. in the poll area, I'll go ahead and read it out loud. So have you ever used Talkmaster for anything other than the dialogue simulations or sales simulations that we've shown? Um, yes, no, or and if it's yes, uh, go ahead and answer in the poll, but also share in chat some of the other ways you've used TalkMaster other than just the talk simulation. So let's let the poll go just for a moment here and I'll open yeah, mine up uh, so I can see it as well. And you can, you guys can just uh, click on the answer in that poll area on your screen and this way you will take the vote. Right, as, a, as she mentioned, uh, a reminder that the poll is available in the uh, GoToWebinar area. Uh, looks like we've got just about everybody voted. Yep. Leave it open just for a moment and then we'll close it. So it looks like the most of you have um, not used it for anything other than simulation. So uh, think about as we create these and how easy they are to create other ways you might use them. And again, those of you that have used them in other ways, please share. So let's go ahead and close and then um, mm -hmm. send me the control again thank you you are in control again <laughs> it's so nice to be in control thank you You're welcome. <laughs> so as I suggested there are ways that we can uh, augment and push the content inside TalkMaster even further and I didn't get into a lot of them but uh, I'll open up TalkMaster here in a moment uh, and obviously some ways are to use the templates uh, the background objects and icons, and especially uh, the character content library. So why would we do this? And again, it's to customize the content, make it look visually appealing, uh, convey meaning and importance, and, and possibly in a moment we'll take a look about triggers and such. But uh, let me go back into the other presentation and go into TalkMaster. So first, uh, we also have these available images and icons. We could have a slide. Um, in any of these that uh, suggest or introduces the TalkMaster simulation. Uh, there's a lot of content to um, view and to obtain, uh, a lot of different items. So again, I wanted to make everyone aware that we can augment uh, any of the information here with any of these objects that you can use within the iSpring suite. Uh, so take a look at those. So it's a very um, it's a great resource to have. And I'm just kind of clicking through each of these areas so you know where they are. Uh, and then, as I suggested earlier, uh, as we get into the TalkMaster area, I had to click in it first, sorry, uh, there you can adjust and, and add additional information in the areas as well. So let me pull up. Again, we have all of our scenes with all of our connected nodes and such, and so we'll go into uh, this Try Again one. We will open it up. We can go into the properties and do a scene color. Uh, we can add a image or link here, uh, and also we can add additional information as we start here, uh, including voiceovers, as you saw in some of the demos. Uh, we can add things from the library here, uh, as we showed earlier. So again, I just wanted to show ways that we could push this further uh, within iSpring. So let me close that down. Okay, and this is how, uh, just a quick overview, I won't go into it because we just had it open, uh, of ways to adjust each and every one of those scenes that looked like cards. And so you saw me click through it 
rather quickly, but you did see me uh, say on item six, you're going through the character emotions, which changed the character itself from the content library that had the emotional states uh, in number five. Those are built in, those are ready-made. Uh, you can also adjust the overall content, the images, as you saw me do with the background image and the character image, as well as each property uh, and colors and such, as you saw me open up just now. Uh, and again, you saw me add the custom replies, answers one, two, and three, as well as the ending message if need be, or a message that says, oh, not quite, let's try again. So those are some ways to customize it. But also, as I suggested, there are ways to add audio. Now, we're not going to go over each and every one of these. Remember, much of this will be very similar to how we added audio uh, in the webinar earlier. So we can record, import, we can even edit using the audio editor, as we mentioned. We can delete portions if we need. Uh, if we need to export the script for narration, we can do that. All of this available inside um, the TalkMaster area. So uh, things to think about. So I will pull this up. So um, this, this website will take a moment to pull up. But before I click on it, what I wanted us to remember, as we consider not only TalkMaster, but adding interactivity within our content, um, we've talked about branching and we've talked about using the talk master to create really excellent branching uh, we can also push the interactivity a little further um, through ready-made content or even 3d assets if available now what i have available here in a moment that i'll show you uh, is a something from babylon js now babylon js and 3js are external javascripts uh, library that allow through the use of webgl uh, viewing uh, to see 3D objects or interact with 3D objects. Again, they're JavaScript libraries that allow 3D objects to be viewed and manipulated on the web. Uh, these can be added using the add web object inside iSpring, and they will translate and pull up within various devices. So especially using these ones that use uh, WebGL. And, and those of you that may have seen this uh, version I did earlier, so I pulled up a 3D model of Sketchfab, uh, I won't do that today because it'll be kind of the same uh, workflow of, of, you know, having the external 3D model available, uh, but then using a third-party site, in this case, Sketchfab, or in this case, what I'm going to pull up is Babylon, uh, and, and having it viewable in the device and the iSpring content. So let me click here. It'll take a moment to load up, and there'll be some audio, again, because it's a jet engine. Uh, this is a demo available on, I don't think I can mute this, so... Um, from Babylon JS, and again, you probably hear some uh, a jet sound. And on screen now, we have pulled up a jet, which I am rotating. This is a jet engine. And again, there's a oh, here's a mute button. So there we go. So I've muted it. Hopefully, you don't still hear it. Uh, but interestingly, and again, this is 3D modeling. This is not created in iSpring. Um, this is external, but you could uh, add this within your iSpring content say in those in the medical field or have done other training in this particular case this is an engineering um, exploded view but we could also do uh, you know views of anatomy uh, to to view um, you know we can have this available to view and have some supporting questions uh, allow the learner or individual to really view uh, what's going on and get a sense of what something might look like or how it relates to other items in a real 3d space i'm not going to go too far down that um, but as we talk about interactivity, I think it's important that we consider a lot of different options. And I wanted to uh, put that seed in your brains that this is possible uh, and it can be included in your iSpring created content. So summing up, we talked about a lot of things. Um, we talked about what it means to be interactive and engaging, uh, why I'm focusing on branching and what that might mean in iSpring um, and how to do it in iSpring with TalkMaster, as well as some really interesting demos available on the, on the iSpring website. Uh, and how to push TalkMaster further with the content library, uh, with informational visuals that are avail available in the iSpring suite. Um, so really what I want to do now is, because I've talked a lot, is I want to open it up for discussion and QA and see what you all have to talk about. We talked and we covered a lot of slides today uh, and a lot of information and went a lot of different directions, fittingly enough because we're talking about branching. So at this point, uh, Paulina, what do we have? So first of all, thank you very much for covering this topic. And I also had a couple of notes from our attendees saying that they have owned iSpring for some time, but they have never used or saw this feature and the potential use of it. So I think that's great that you 
have talked about it and showed it, showcased it to our attendees so that they can be more successful in their training and just make it more um, enhanced and uh, engaging and make their learners to retain the content they are sharing. And mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was agreeing with you. And in fact, I, I don't think I pushed this quite home far enough. iSpring is a fantastic tool, and TalkMaster is one of the gems, is one of the uh, really great, very useful, and very interactive tools available. And so I, I agree with everyone. It's a great thing to showcase and view. All right, and moving on to our questions, there's a question from Ellen. How do you feel about virtual reality as a training tool? It depends, uh, and so I always talk about virtual reality and augmented reality, and these have been, augmented reality has been around for quite a while, so, um, it, it and I say it depends, because I've had people come up to me and, and ask, well, what about augmented reality for um, showing how to do um, scrum or iterative um, process? Uh, and again, that's a, uh, something we would discuss. It's a, it's a conceptual idea. It's really hard to get that um, within the frame of a 3D world or uh, augmented or virtual world. So in that case, it may not work. But for in the case of seeing how uh, being aware of your surroundings at a bus stop or an air terminal uh, and actually viewing or safety within a new factory, these are excellent examples of how to use it in real world uh, examples on how to see it in virtual. Now, Again, we've seen some of that using third-party websites, specifically Sketchfab, where Sketchfab has the, uh, you know, you can put the 3D model in and then you see it in virtual world. And those can be uh, in, uh, inserted inside iSpring. Um, but true augmented reality itself from start to finish is a whole separate um, pipeline and process. So we wouldn't be able to cover that. But it's certainly useful depending on the content and, of course, depending on your learner. Thank you very much. And moving on to the next question from Sue. Have you seen these simulations used to market or explain products and services in a business through a website? Um, that's interesting. So I've used this, I've used TalkMaster in order to create um, some scenarios, some branching scenarios. I don't know that I have specific concrete examples of, of using this for different product or services to demo. But that would be a good way to do it, uh, wherein a learner could go in and, and choose, uh, you know, whichever one they wanted to see, go down and, and drill into that path as far as they wanted, and even come back or restart if need be. Um, but again, if anyone else has, has examples, that'd be great to see. Right, I definitely agree with you. And a question from Stephanie. In iSpring, is it possible to do a sort of interaction where learners click on parts of a slide and information about each part shows up when they click on it? It certainly is, uh, and we'll be talking a little bit of that, I think, in the coming weeks. Um, but just to give you a concrete example, as I mentioned, if I still have it up, sorry, here in my screen, is this it? No, where is it? This one. Okay, so this is a, and you have this link available. This is the uh, very first example I showed. Uh, and notice that when we have a rollover on this particular one, let me cut off the music, by the way, sorry. So in this one, the trigger is the rollover. So as you suggested, new information would come up as they clicked on it. Um, in the coming weeks, I think next week, but I'm not sure, we will look at ways to do these triggers. Uh, so it certainly is possible using the inherent PowerPoint uh, animations and triggers. So start with that, and then we will definitely get into that topic soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And there is a, an interesting question from Francesca. I see how you can add questioning in TalkMaster, but can you discuss how you can incorporate QuizMaker for more formal assessment with this type of interaction? Do you find it necessary? Well, and again, it depends. So going back to our, I'll just open up QuizMaker. Um, so what we could do for one thing, obviously, is use Presentation Explorer. Um, and whether or not we have a specific question here, um, if they get a specific answer wrong, we could go into a different slide and show them various things. If they need to take a quiz at that point, we can do it. Uh, again, you can't add quizzes directly inside the TalkMaster simulation, but you can have the results branch off to a different slide or quiz in that respect. So that's one way to think about doing it. Um, in the demo that I did not go fully into, and I'll go back to that slide so you know what I'm talking about, 
Uh, and this, where I go back, let me get through the FAQ, there is that same uh, branching that you mentioned. So let's continue. We go back to the main slide. Um, in this one, the, the interactions branch off to various locations, in this case, uh, a visual. And it does just what you talk about. There's a little bit later, there's a Talkmaster quiz that goes on, but it branches off to a different part uh, in order to get through this, in order to see the full one. So that's one way to do it. Um, again, mixing and matching and branching off based on various scenarios. So, Thank you. And moving on to the next question from Melanie. Thank you for the webinar. My profession deals with a lot of high level and at times we need to bring in the 3D world to help explain concepts. Do you have any resources that I would, uh, sorry, that would help me investigate and determine if iSpring and 3D is something my company could implement? Well, certainly, and we can also take that question offline. There's a lot of resources available um, and some just off the top my head, of course, are what we talk about, which is Sketchfab, the ability to have a viewer you can bring in as a web object, um, just like you would anything else, a YouTube video, an audio video within iSpring. Um, in order to get 3D models into that, if you need 3D models, there's what's called TurboSquid, um, T-U-R-B-O-S-Q-U-I-D.com. Uh, has a lot of available free and also paid for 3D assets. There's a lot of websites like that, but those are places to start. And as well, if you have developers that can create Unity um, interactions, again, unity3d.com, I think. Uh, this this is a video game engine that you can also do 2D and 3D uh, interactions and, and games and, and all sorts of things. But these are ways to get started as well uh, as uh, the links I provided here which are the external JavaScript libraries that allow you to bring in and interact with uh, 3D using WebGL, which I bring that up because that specifically allows usually uh, browser-based 3D interaction or viewing within various devices. So it works pretty well universally, not always, but pretty well. Again, things like Unity allow for WebGL as well. Uh, and that's probably a whole other webinar series on its own, but certainly those are places to start. Uh, and again, for whomever asks, if you want to contact me directly, we can talk about that. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. And the next question from Carl. <clears throat> Slightly off topic, creating a learning module is complex enough, resources, timelines, objectives, that a project management tool would be useful. Any software you use to, any project management software you use to manage e-learning development? Anything specific versus MS project? Right, and I, that is a little off topic, so I won't spend a whole lot of time, but f again, feel free to uh, talk with me offline about it. So uh, I'm a big proponent of open source and free due to not only budget constraints personally and keeping my overhead down, but also for clients. Uh, I've used a lot of uh, items such as Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O.com, -E uh, which are Kanban-based boards that you can uh, uh, you know, pull different cards to in order to show tasks uh, in progress done or not. Uh, and that sometimes helps with uh, individual tasks or Q&A, um, but also free, I think it's called Freed Camp, uh, F-R-E-E-D-C-A-M-P. Uh, it's a tool that does a lot of different things, including Kanban-esque. Um, many of you may have used uh, Jira, J-I-R-A. Uh, that is, again, a project management tool that, that can use Confluence in the background to do stuff. So it really depends. Um, you know, it, some of these tools may, uh, may be too much for what you're doing in your project management sessions. So it depends on what your group is comfortable with. Sometimes a simple, uh, you know, uh, task order inside, say, a Google spreadsheet or inside a Word spreadsheet, uh, Excel spreadsheet, you know, again, with the tasks and who's assigned to and what they're doing. You don't have to go really robust or very complex with these. They can be very simple. But those are some of the tools uh, I've used, and I think they're a good place to start. Thank you very much. And I've shared um, the Turbo, Turbo Squid, Trello, and FreedCamp websites in the chat section. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, and uh, the next question is from Johan Kamm. Going back to the quizzes, Michael, you mentioned you could branch from the quiz to the interaction, but I don't see an option for that on the quiz. 
you cut out uh, on my end just the first part of that. So they want to make sure that there's interaction between Talkmaster and the quiz, but they don't branch, see branch from the quiz to the interaction. They don't see that opportunity or option. Right. Um, and so depending on the quiz, and, and um, I won't go into specifics here, but let's say we have a new slides, and I'll just do that so that I can um, show the quiz master. So I know that in the quiz master here, depending on pass or fail, and again, I'll go through this quickly. I'll create one. I won't do anything to it, but we'll have it here so that it can show up as a quiz on Presentation Explorer. Uh, I'll go ahead and wait for it to come up. Sorry about the delay. Uh, what I'm going to suggest here is as we have a graded quiz, and I'll just save it as is. Okay, congratulations, you passed. Another exclamation. Uh, I have to add a qu um, question. Sorry, everyone. So here's a question graded, multiple choice. Now we can save. Okay. Uh, and as we do this, so let's say you have a quiz uh, that needs to go um, based on pass or fail uh, into um, the quiz master. In the presentation explorer, you can now that you've created the quiz, and of course, there's several ways to do this. So, but in the branching here um, with this one selected, we can say on pass go to a different slide uh, on, and then let's say, if we want them to say pass and go to the FAQ or the talk master, we go here. On fail, they go somewhere else. So that's one way to do it. Uh, there's probably other ways to do it that can be suggested here, but that's at least one way to uh, get to and fro these. Again, creating these as you would slides as self-contained, uh, but also making it and ensuring where the learner would go based on the branching inside Presentation Explorer. Awesome. Thank you very much. And I hope that answers your question, Johanka. And I just want to remind everyone that Alex has been taking care of your questions in the question box during our webinar. So thank you very much, Alex, for doing that. You saved us a whole lot of time. And I have a very nice comment and a question from Chanel. Hi, thank you for this webinar. I have learned a whole lot. I'm new to e-learning development and I will be using iSpring a lot to convert my face-to-face -face courses to online courses. Is there a webinar or course I can do to better master iSpring and to learn more about e-learning development and so? So at this point, I would be more than happy to share all our replays for the previous webinar series sessions. And I will be doing so in chat right now. And maybe, Michael, if you have any other resources uh, that you would like to share, please do so. Certainly. While you do that, I, so I, thanks. First, thanks for the comment. That That's very nice of you. And so I think that's great. So also remember that we're all here to share ideas and learn. So we very much encourage everyone to, to do that uh, same thing and, and, and say, here's what I'm doing. How do you do this? Um, so with that same resource, that's really what we try to do in this webinar series is, is get the best of and the best practices and the best ideas. And within that, as you review what Polina is putting here, uh, remember that each of these, I've tried really hard to grab some really great resources for you. Uh, so as you watch the replays, you may see a lot of information and see the, the links listed. So start from there, uh, and then let's have the dialogue continue about where you want to go from there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just reading the comment. Uh, thanks, Paulina. You are a star. Once again, thanks. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys, for coming. You are making this whole series possible because with no attendees, there will be no sessions, no webinars. And um, I've also um, have seen a lot of comments saying that, Michael, you are encouraging people to communicate. However, um, GoToWebinar is a little bit limited in these terms. so. Only organizers can see what you guys are sharing in the comments section. So I was thinking maybe for the next session we will be have we will have like five to ten minutes for an open mic because I know that there is such a possibility and maybe give the enable uh, microphones for whoever wants to share their experience and just bring up the live discussion for like maybe 10 minutes not more than that i think what do you guys think what do you michael think about that uh, and i'll do a quick answer while everybody talks i think that's great uh, i think uh, also it's that's a very uh, you know understood critique and so that's apt 
So let's try to uh, make sure we use the webinar tool that we're using in a way that's beneficial for everyone. So certainly let's open up the mics um, at the end, uh, so during the Q&A session next time. It may run a little long, but we'll make sure we keep an idea on, uh, you know, an eye on time, uh, those that can stay. Again, we, we don't know how long the Q&A will take once we open up the mics, but we'll certainly try it. I'm great with that, so that's a great suggestion. Yeah, and for those of you who are not comfortable with uh, saying their questions out loud, that's fine. You are still will be able to submit them in the question box and get them um, addressed in a in a normal manner, like we normally do that. And I'm sure that somebody from the support team uh, will join us the next time we cover our next topic. So we're just uh, thinking how we can possibly make it easier for you and. Uh, just make you, I'm sorry, make this webinar is more useful to you guys. So I think that'll help. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Let's do it. All right. Um, okay, so Ellen says, can all of the links in the chat be sent out in an email after this webinar? Um, sure, Ellen, we can do that. Um, however, I think we will include all the links in our um blog post that will be released for each webinar after the webinar has taken place so i think this should take care of that and um yeah i think at this point we have taken care of all the questions that have come in the question box and i would like to thank alex for taking care of it alex will we hear your voice today <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> okay, just a little bit is fine. <laughs> thank you very much for helping us out. And I would like to thank Michael for covering this awesome topic for us today. Thanks again. And we will see you guys uh, next week. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Yes, and we will be talking about user interface and user experience. So make sure to do with us. <laughs> next week. All right. Have It'll a, be great... a lot of fun. Yeah, of course. Tell your friends. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, everyone. And bye bye.